I give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, which in Hebrew are the wonderful names of the Creator, our Heavenly Father, I Am, which this world has named God, and His beloved anointed Son, which this world has named Jesus. I give honor, respect, and thanks to all the true, faithful, and sincere apostles, elders, prophets, and torchbearers of the nation of Israel, who have willingly endured and risked much to bring forth the truth. Thank you, brothers. In this chapter, we are continuing the conversation of warnings, a token of love. This is a message to our brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel, the mighty nation of Israel being the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latins, Hispanics, and the so-called Native Americans. The warnings given unto us by Yahweh, the Most High Power, the Creator of heaven and earth, the Creator of all things, the Creator and Destroyer, the one who has chosen the nation of Israel. His warnings unto the nation of Israel are a token of love so that we may be prepared for what shall occur. And while Yahweh Shai was in the flesh preaching unto the nation of Israel, he left us with many tokens. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 10, verse 22. And ye, the nation of Israel, shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So that's a warning, which is a token of love, letting us know that we shall be hated and that we need to endure, not to protest, not to march, not to riot, not to destroy property but to endure to the end. Yes, we can defend ourselves. We can defend ourselves physically and spiritually, yes. But this was a warning. And through the Spirit, this was discussed in chapters 280 through 282. Prepare for the hate. And that hate is rearing its head more and more and more towards the Israelites on the earth today. Sadly, we have been a rebellious house and a stiff-necked people. The first scripture we're going to in this chapter is the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 10. This is the father speaking through the prophet Jeremiah. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of Yahweh is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. So who of the nation of Israel can I warn? Can I give a token of love to? Saying, hey, if you don't stop your ways, here's what's going to happen. I mean, look, their ears are uncircumcised. They don't want to hear the word. They don't want to hear the warning. They don't want to hear the laws. They don't want to hear the father's voice. They can't listen. The word of the father is unto them a reproach. It's distasteful. They have no delight in it. Here is love being given unto us by our Father, and we want nothing to do with it, sadly. The book of Psalms, chapter 125, verse 3. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. So if we listen to the warnings... The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon those that are righteous, that are turned unto the Father. Yes, we'll have our trials and tribulations, but that rod won't rest upon us. We won't be beaten with it unless the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity, unless we go searching for it. Yes, I'll take some of that iniquity, some of that wickedness, some of that sinfulness. Yes, I'll take on the customs and the ways and the doctrines and the philosophies and the values and the morals of this last wicked kingdom. Yes, I'll take that on. Well, you do that, the rod of the wicked shall rest upon you. The brothers are out here speaking this word today in full force, speaking, thus saith the Most High. Here is what our King of Kings said. Here's what you can expect. Do you have the ears to hear and the eyes to see where we have been as a people with slavery and colonization, theft of land and property, family members, injustice, oppression. Can you see and hear who we are? The second book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 16. And therefore he, he being Yahweh, never withdraweth his mercy from us, the nation of Israel. And though he punish with adversity, 
yet doth he never forsake his people. So we've been through some adversity and some oppression, but the Father has never forsaken us. If you ever have any doubt that the Father exists, know this, the devil, which are the rulers of this last wicked kingdom, filled with the spirit of Satan, have been trying to destroy the Israelites for centuries. And the only reason we're here is because there is a one true living most high power, Yahweh, who has chosen the nation of Israel. That's the only reason we're still here. It's not through any power or might of our own or our will. Verse 17, but let this that we at spoken be for a warning unto us. So let everything that is being talked about, about the punishments, and the deaths and the adversity and the atrocities that happen unto us, let it be a warning unto us. This is what happens when we do not listen to the Father. Because the Father has us covered. The choice is ours. Do we want to hear it or not? The book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 17 also I, I being Yahweh, set watchmen over you, you being the nation of Israel, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. So a trumpet was used to announce warning, warning, danger, danger. So the father has set up the prophets, those that speak his word in truth and in sincerity to watch over the nation of Israel. And the brothers say, listen to the warnings. But many of our brothers and sisters say we will not hearken. Well, let's see how that works out. The book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 33, verse 4. Then, whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the sword come, if destruction comes, and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. So through the prophets, the nation of Israel is being warned. Here's where we are in the timeline. Here's what's going on. Here's what we can expect. Yahweh I said, we shall be hated of all men for his name's sake. That's happening. Verse 5. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Because the warning is a token of love from the Father. I'm going to destroy everything over there. Don't be over there when I do it. Okay, the father said that. I'm going to be over here. But the stiff-necked and rebellious amongst us will be like, well, let me go over here and see what's going on over here. Let me just go wander over here and see what goes on. And they are destroyed. There are warnings all throughout the Bible, all throughout the living word. It is the living word because it is the past the present and the future all rolled into one. The second book of the prophet Esdras, chapter 5, verse 1. This is the prophet Esdras speaking unto the Father. Nevertheless, as coming the tokens, behold, the days shall come that they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in great number, and the way of truth shall be hidden, and the land shall be barren of faith. We are in these times now. Many people are taken with the customs and the traditions and the deceit of this last wicked kingdom. They love this world, this time frame, this age, this span of time. They love it. Verse 2, but iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest or that thou hast heard long ago. So hold this. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 24, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Warnings of the future in the Apocrypha, spoken by the Father. Warnings of the future, spoken of by our King of Kings and Lord of Lords in the New Testament. Verse 3. And the land that thou seest now to have root, shalt thou see wasted suddenly. So for our brothers and sisters who think that this last wicked kingdom is going to last forever and that nothing can occur to it, look at where we are today. Economies shut down. Governments shut down. 
little things that you used to be able to do, you can't do. You can't go to the library. You can't go to the movies. In many places, you can't go to a restaurant and sit down and have a meal. No one saw this coming last year. <laughs> and the land that thou seest now to have root, to be solid, shalt thou see wasted suddenly. And how shall it be wasted suddenly? The second book of the prophet Ezra, chapter 7, verse 43. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. Remember, world means time frame, age, span of time. So when it's spoken, the end of the world. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of the immortality for to come. The nation of Israel, world, time frame, age, span of time, without end. And the beginning of the immortality for to come, wherein corruption is past. Intemperance is at an end. Infidelity is cut off. Righteousness is grown. And truth is sprung up. So what's that infidelity? Worshipping anything other than the Father. That's infidelity. We as a nation are, nations are referred to as women. And the nation of Israel belongs unto the Father. We belong unto him. And we are to worship nothing that is not the Father. Very clear, very clear instructions in Exodus 20. Many brothers and sisters are coming back into this truth and the righteousness is growing and truth is sprung up. It's on the internet. All praise to the Most High. Going everywhere on this earth. Everywhere on this earth. Verse 45. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that hath gotten the victory. So we must accept the Father's righteous judgment. And there is no amount of fellowship you can do with the wicked that do not want to hear the Father's words that will save them from destruction. And in the new kingdom, nor to oppress him that hath gotten the victory. So if we endure to the end, we get the victory which is the new kingdom, and no one shall be able to oppress us again. Which means those of this last wicked kingdom, when the Father says their time is over, they shall be uprooted suddenly and quickly. The devil's time will be over. And what can the devil do about that? Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed. And that is the truth. These warnings from the Father are a token of love unto his holy, chosen, and peculiar nation, the nation of Israel. Sadly, only one-third are going to accept this gift at this time. Only one-third of the nation of Israel will be able to hear and see the gift that the Father is presenting unto us right now. That this last wicked kingdom shall come to an end. It will come suddenly and swiftly. And then the nation of Israel shall take their righteous place eternally. Make no mistake about it. World War III and the nuclear destruction of America are coming. It will coincide exactly with the return of our King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Savior, High Priest and Brother, Yahawashai. Thus saith Yahweh. Philippians 2, 9-11 Wherefore, Yahweh also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yahweh Shai every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai is Lord, to the glory of Yahweh the Father. As it is written, thus saith Yahweh, and nothing can stop it. This is a final warning, Israel. Shake off this world, remember who you are, and come home. All praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai.